Welcome to 6.5 on the road from SC25, the supercomputing conference to end all supercomputing conferences. This year in St. Louis, Missouri, a uh, little trivia. This is where the supercompute organization is based and was founded. So this is a bit of a special event this year. I'm joined by a very special guest, Saurabh Kapoor. Saurabh, welcome. Thank you, Dave. Thank, thank you for having me here. What do you do at Dell, Saurabh? Uh, so I, I lead product management strategy for software solutions in AI computer networking uh, business unit. And I also champion Dell at the governing board for Linux Foundation for the Sonic project. So championing some of our open source initiatives, making sure that, you know, bring the best of the world to our customers and partners. Very interesting because it brings up an interesting subject, which is this idea of open standards mm -hmm. as people are building out their AI infrastructure. So start us out kind of with a little 101. What is, what is Sonic? Where did it come from? Why is it important that Dell embraces and extends Sonic's capabilities? Absolutely. Well, Sonic stands for Software for Open Networking in the Cloud. It's a brainchild of Microsoft. And back in the days when they were looking to build Azure services, they were dealing with pockets of different proprietary vendor networking stacks. And they decided that, you know, just like in the compute world where Windows came in and that led to a lot of software harmonization across the board, across multiple, you know, vendor platforms running common software across the board, application portability was easier, manageability was easier. They wanted to do something similar to the networking side. So they took Debian Linux, added networking functionality as containers on top of it and called it Sonic. And the, the goal was to open source that you know, project. They enabled that into the community, uh, had you know, every major Mercican, merchant silicon vendor who wanted to participate in that ecosystem, you know, enable the stack, you know, had ODMs and OEMs you know, part of the journey. So that was like real open networking, open source networking uh, into, into the industry. And I think seven years later, Sonic has become the Linux of networking. We started our journey about seven years back. We embraced open networking. This is aligned with how Michael started the company where choice and flexibility is key to our portfolio. You know, we want to bring in the open standards to our customers and we got onto the Sonic bandwagon. Um, the entire portfolio is Sonic based, so one gig to 800 gig. We're launching 1.6 terabyte next year. Uh, Sonic is the way forward. You mentioned choice and uh, you know, one, of the, one of the key hallmarks of what Dell offers, um, uh, flexibility and choice. Is AI a headwind when it comes to open standards and Sonic mm -hmm. in the sense that people are absolutely frantic for time to market, time to value? Or can you make the case that in fact, if I'm a CIO building infrastructure out, that actually it makes a lot of sense um, to go with this more open environment. How, what are your What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, no, that's a great one, and you're spot on when you say you know some of the time to value, time to AI kind of concepts, right? AI is no more a technology trend. It's it's a it's a technology revolution that's happening now. You know, AI rolling out in smart cities, you know, helping climate control, you know, in pharma, you know, improving the rate of predictive, you know, analytics and, you know, health, you know, improvements in drug discovery and things like that. So it's, it's happening real time as we see around us. What's important when you talk to, you know, some of those largest deployments with AI is realization that time to value, trust of technology and ease of management. Those are the three big things that are realizing. And when, when I say time to value is, they want to make sure that the technologies they're bringing in, in the next gen technologies and give them the right capacity to build infrastructures on and move faster. Time to first token is, is what their objectives are. They want to build technologies and infrastructures on, on partners they can trust on because these are big investments, ma massive investments, large clusters with, with a goal to move faster. So they want to make sure that technologies that are proven at scale are, are brought in. And finally, ease of management. Yes, because you can get an infrastructure up and humming, but then you know you also need to make sure that the day-to operations and manageability is easier. And Sonic, like check mark across the board on all those three objectives. Uh, it's a technology that is proven at scale at the hyperscaler world. Just at Microsoft, you're talking about 600,000 plus switches in production. So now think of you know the broader hyperscaler ecosystem that has deployed Sonic at scale. Yeah. And and proven for AI from a feature functionality perspective. The, the trust element comes in when you see at the, the scale where the technology has been deployed. 
And then finally, ease of management. Because the stack is modular, microservices architecture, everything is API centric, so you can pull out the northbound APIs, connect into in-house tools, third-party tools, vendor-provided tools, so a lot of flexibility there. And then we're looking all the way up to streaming telemetry, silicon telemetry, so you need, like you have access into what's happening at the buffer analysis, you know, the flow analysis, buffer statistics, you know, capabilities like mirror on drops and things like that, so that you have better visibility into the stack. So Sonic is, is checkmark across the board on all those objectives. It's been proven at scale and now, you know, championing some of the largest AI uh, production environments. Yeah, well, you gave, you, you know, when you talk about proven at scale, you gave the example of Microsoft. Um, what about what about Dell? Are you mm -hmm. drinking your own champagne, as they say? Absolutely. Uh, and and so you are in yes. fact deploying to Sonic. Yes. Well, what what have you learned from mm -hmm. from deploying that at scale in your own environments? Yeah. Where you can't run and hide if something goes wrong. <laughs> you can't you can't say, well, it's Dell's fault. It's like, no, no, you yes. are Dell. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, and this is a journey we took uh, a couple of years back when we were you know, bringing this technology to our customers from tier one cloud service providers to large enterprises and telcos, uh, Dell IT is, is a big ecosystem. We're talking about 12,000 sure. plus sure. switches that we have in production and actively growing and scaling. And, and this is an environment we're talking about data centers. We have manufacturing sites, customer solution centers, executive briefing centers, branch offices. So you see the, the kind of mix we have with, with respect to connectivity. We brought in Sonic across the board they started rolling out Sonic across different environments, so 23 global data centers. And we saw a lot of learning during the process, which is, you know, feature functionalities, you know, the kind of hardening and testing we need to do. Um, the use cases we were adding as we were extending Sonic from data centers to manufacturing locations and environments where you need power over Ethernet, port security, and all those capabilities. We started extending Sonic for, for some of those use cases. And we saw that you know, enabling Sonic for these use cases led to a lot of ease of management. Dell IT, you know, teams were able to manage those environments, edge locations, just like how they would manage data centers. So they could just scale quickly. There was ease of management across the board. One common software stack that runs across the board was, was the big mantra. And while we were doing this, we were also working on AI to bring in, you know, the next gen technologies to our customers. So rolling out Codium infrastructures and different AI solutions that we were building and basing it on Sonic. So all of AI optimizations that, you know, make its way into Sonic was, was another big initiative in-house. So we have a part 200% Sonic. We're working on it. We have about 3,000 switches in production. We're working towards all 12,000 switches in production in the next couple of years. Some people, when they hear open, they get a chill that runs up and down <laughs> their spine because they think, oh no. Open, that must mean I'm going to have network administrators that are bringing their pet birds to work and they're the only people who are going to understand it and if they leave, we're in big trouble. Uh, reassure us that just because it's open doesn't mean that it's not a real enterprise-ready, hardened solution. Absolutely. Help us out there. No, you're right. I mean, you know, this is what we get, you know, uh, with, with some of the customers who are kind of, you know, been using some of the property stack for years and they, you know, they always, you know, have a hesitation around, hey, you know, do I do it or not do it? And what you've realized is one, you know, the, once these users have adopted Sonic into the environment, they love it. They love it to, you know, just that's the only thing they want to do next, right? Uh, so Sonic and, and especially with, with Dell ch championing this technology, you get the best of both the worlds. You get open standards and you know, the, the pace of innovation that is happening in the community. And you have an enterprise partner who's enabling this 24 by seven support globally across the board. So you have a partner who you can call like 1-800-DELL for all things, you know, Sonic, infrastructure, manageability, new capabilities, predictable roadmap, you know, enabling services, support, training, certifications, whatnot. So we have kind of, you know, helped 1,600 plus production deployments across tier one, tier two cloud service providers, large enterprises and telco, but we're just getting started. You know, the road for Sonic, as we see others in the vendor community also embracing it, it's, it's very encouraging to see Sonic getting mainstream across the board. Uh, the technology has been proven at scale and, and we are looking to extend this, you know, from the hyperscaler ecosystem to everybody else from core to AI fabrics. And the feedback has been mind blowing. 
Uh, we love the customer feedback, keep our ears to the ground to make sure that we incorporate customer feedback into our product life cycles and just continue to innovate and evolve. So if someone is concerned about possibly painting themselves into a corner mm -hmm. in an era where we tend to talk about things for all practical purposes in terms of infinite scale, when someone says 10 gigawatt data center, <laughs> we've sort of gotten used to that, but that is just, it's mind boggling. It's mind blowing. Um, what would your advice be to uh, someone who is charged with the responsibility of building out infrastructure that isn't going to paint them into a corner? Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, I guess one decision point is around ethernet for this. Right. Uh, a lot has been made about uh, the advantage in terms of power consumption that comes along with ethernet and at scale that becomes incredible with power being such a constraint. But what would your advice be right. to someone who is saying, hey, I don't wanna paint myself into a corner. Um, okay, I'm not as nervous about the whole open thing. I think you're gonna be there as a backstop to support me, but, but what do I do? Where do I get started? How do I, how do I start this? Right, so well, you spoke about ethernet, right? A technology that has been proven at scale. Uh, some say it's 50 years old, we say 50 years young. Um, every 18 months, you see the speeds double. Uh, there's a rich ecosystem around Ethernet. Uh, cloud was nothing but distributed computing all connected over Ethernet and prone at scale, right? You see a similar trend happening in the AI world. You now see some of the largest, you know, supercomputers, you know, being built with Ethernet as the core infrastructure enabling that. Um, what we are seeing now is with all those optimizations that have made its way into, you know, with Ethernet and the network operating system, it is delivering similar performance as you know the traditional technologies that champion HPC environments, right? Higher rate switching, ability to address congestion management capabilities, better load balancing, um, adaptive routing capabilities, telemetry-based congestion management, um, RDMA or converge Ethernet to address lossless fabrics. All those things packaged with higher rate switching, 800 gig, 1.6 terabyte coming soon, allows that data movement within highly optimized fabric. What you know, the users need to um, understand is, when we're looking at these AI infrastructures, the workloads are different, the characteristics are different. You're looking at elephant flows, busty traffics, links that can get saturated in microseconds. So you need that infrastructure that has you know, all these AI optimizations. You know, we've all brought in all of those capabilities in Sonic. So make sure that you are not leveraging your traditional proprietary networking solutions you have, uh, you know, you bring in AI optimized infrastructure to champion those environments, that's first. And second is make sure that you're not just looking at networking independently. AI is all about that solutioning with compute, storage, networking, all coming together to a common objective of certain outcomes and use cases that you need from training, inferencing to fine tuning. And at Dell, we brought in the concept of Dell AI Factory, which is bringing the AI optimized infrastructure, making sure we bring in the data element to it. We're not you know, taking AI to data, but you know, enabling that you know, infrastructure to bunch of outcomes and use cases and simplifying the journey towards AI. A t-shirt size, package for different workloads, use cases for an end objective. So those are some of the things that we're seeing as best practices and some of the largest rollouts happening with, with those. So we hear a lot about rack scale deployments Mm -hmm. from Dell, because these things are becoming largely rack-scale deployments. Um, when Dell talks about a rack-scale deployment, they're talking about Dell racks. Right. When you talk about Sonic from an open networking perspective, correct me if I'm wrong, sure. but you can have this Dell Sonic mm -hmm. Ethernet network that, uh, forbid this may happen, but a customer could, in fact, mm -hmm. drop racks in that aren't Dell racks of gear, right. correct? One of the benefits of open standards. So it goes back to that idea of right. being locked in because exactly. you love what you're getting, yes. not because of a proprietary standard. Yes. But so, so that whole Dell networking story is open in that sense. 100%, 100%. Okay. And then the stack will remain open, as I said, right? This is how Michael started the company and choice and flexibility is big because yeah. We want to give customers the control on how they want to build that infrastructure. And as rightly said, they're looking for 
you know, a good heterogeneous environment. Sonic provides you then the platform where they can pick whatever technology, hardware technology they want. It's an operating system that is running across the board, follows RFC and IEEE standards with every protocol that is running on it. And, and you know, allows you that choice and mix that you want for your environment. So you're not locked into a vendor stack, a proprietary stack where you have to use a certain hardware, a certain operating system, certain set of tools that our vendor provided, or you're locked into a, a certain vendor roadmap to deliver those capabilities and infrastructures. You now are basing yourself on a stack that is open source based. It gives you the flexibility and economics of scale when you know it comes to hardware. Uh, you seek a partner that you know gives you a promise of predictability, support as you cha and champion those open source technologies in the environment, and then just scale and build on top of it. Sarab, final question for you: As we look forward mm -hmm. to SC twenty six, because increasingly the supercomputing conference is representing a date in the calendar more important to me than even holidays. <laughs> as you look forward to SC twenty six. Any, any predictions you want to go on the record? They can be crazy predictions <laughs> about the direction we're going to go. What's going to happen in the next year? And don't, and don't just tell me that, oh, you know, speeds, NIC speeds are going to get faster and <laughs> network. Yeah, okay, we expect that, right? Yeah. But uh, what do you think? Anything crazy going to happen in the next year? Well, uh, what, what we are seeing is, uh, yes, we've championed some of the largest hyperscalers in the world, adopting AI, building the largest supercomputers. The next wave of you know trends and evolution is going to be enterprises now rolling out AI. Okay. Well, those are not going to be like massive clusters. We're seeing variability from a, like a 256 GPU cluster to a 2K GPU cluster, and and building those use cases and outcomes that they're looking at from banking and healthcare and you know different you know functions within enterprises. I think that's going to be a big thing. So creating those smaller T-shirt sized validated architectures is something that we're laser focused on. And the other trend we're seeing is uh, more likeness towards open standards based architecture because that helps them grow faster um, and bring down the cost of you know building those infrastructures. Uh, power is going to be another big element. We're looking at the next generation switches now with DLC as one of the capabilities like liquid cooling capabilities are going to be important because these are power hungry devices and how do you manage that cost and, and consumption of power is is with liquid. So. Those would be three big ones, AI enterprises, ease of management, power consumption, um, and validated architectures. Well, Sarb Kapoor from Dell, thank you for joining us. And by the way, your comments on uh, sort of the age of enterprise AI deployment in 2026 maps nicely with a study that uh, Wharton recently commissioned, right. interviewing uh, a lot of customers of folks like Dell. Right. And uh, and so that 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 seems to ring true. But we'll we'll see. We'll see how your prediction bears out at SC26. But from SC25, thanks for joining us. I'm Dave Nicholson for 65 Media on the Road.